Hello everyone. Um, in this video, I'm not going to be talking about body modification. I'm sorry if you're disappointed. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the semicolon project. And if you don't know what that is, it's on today, which is April the 16th. You are supposed to draw a semicolon on your wrist. If you have ever, or still do, or know anyone who does self-harm. And um, I have one on my wrist because I used to do self-harm and I know a few people who still do do self-harm. And um, I figured I would make this video in order to one, raise awareness and two, share my story so maybe if anybody who's watching who still does self-harm who wants to seek help but they just need to find the courage maybe this will be enough inspiration to give that little push um, I guess we can start by saying um, my story that um, I have depression and bipolar 2 which if you don't know what bipolar 2 is it's it's pretty much like depression it's like in depression um, or in bipolar you have like really high highs and really low lows and I just have the really low lows which is like depression but um, mine I have mood swings with it so it doesn't really help with my depression um, I started doing self-harm when I was 12 years old and it started out really small um, I've always had, you know, before I was, I don't know how long I've really, my depression's really been a problem because I was only, I was diagnosed with it, um, last year. Um, but I've always had problems with dealing with my emotions and knowing, and, uh, talking about them and just really being emotionally healthy. Um, I remember the first time I cut myself, it, it started out as scratching really. I, uh, I always kept my fingernails pretty long, and, um, I had been really depressed about something or another, whatever 12-year-olds can be depressed about, um, been depressed about it for about a week, and I was just, you know when you have, like, you're just really sad, and you have that really, like, anxious, like, I don't know what to do with my sadness type feeling, and it feels like your soul is, like, overflowing, like, bubbling over with, like, this just horrendous depression and you don't know what to do that's what I had and I was sitting um, in church I was sitting I sat in the very back pew because um, I grew up Southern Baptist and it was a very small church it was like maybe like 30 people so nobody noticed that I was sitting in the back and I just had the overflowing feeling and I had heard of people um, cutting themselves to relieve their pain so I took my thumbnail and I scratched just like over my wrist like up and down like it didn't bleed any the most it did was really bruise the surface but it hurt I mean I'm scratching myself on purpose and um, it did relieve the pain for a while and I remember after I did it I had like this this feeling of relief I guess like I said, it didn't last very long, but it was something to help me cope. And um, I, over time, from the time I was 12 until 14, I went from scratching to actually cutting myself. Uh, I started using um, scissors, like hair cutting scissors, because they're sharper. And um, they, like, I used scissors, and once I used a knife, and uh, I use sharpened pencils sometimes, um, but I wouldn't cut, like, I wouldn't press very hard, I wouldn't cut very deep. Um, it would really just, if it did bleed, it would just, you know, the blood would beat up. It was more like a paper cut than anything. Um, I guess my self-harm didn't start getting really bad until I was about 15, maybe 16. Um, my depression started getting worse as I got older you know I started having worse problems and um, 
once again, I wasn't very emotionally healthy or stable and I didn't know how to deal with it properly. I didn't tell anybody my problems. Whenever I tried to, it seemed to be a bad, like I just had bad timing when I decided to try to help. And the people who I reached out to either pushed me away or didn't know how to help me properly. And um, it made it worse. Um, I built up my wall even higher. I started cutting with more purpose. By that I mean um, I would start using really sharp, you know, knives and scissors and I would press harder and I would cut in all different directions. Um, my best friend actually found out and he would start checking my wrists every day to see if I cut so I started checking on my so I started uh, cutting on my hips and thighs and now I have scars pretty much all over my body because whenever I would cut in a place he could see easily I would cut in a place he couldn't see in public which was the only place I saw him um, I started feeling suicidal, I guess. It would go off and on from the point of... I first felt it when I was 14, but it was half-hearted, and I never tried really to do anything full-heartedly. Um, when I started feeling suicidal was when I was about 16, almost 17 years old, and I would... Um, not try to kill myself per se, but I would make it to where if I did die, it would be really hard for me to um, take it back. Like, I would starve myself for short periods of times. My, my normal way is I'm healthy now. I eat, I eat like, I eat fairly healthy. Um, by that I mean I eat junk food sometimes. But um, I weigh about 108 pounds right now. I'm five foot two. I'm very petite. It's I know I sound too skinny, but I'm really not. I have I have fat. I mean I have a healthy weight. But whenever I would starve myself, I typically weighed around that time, maybe like 105, 110, somewhere in between there. And I dipped to about 90 pounds at one point for not eating for about a week or eating very very little and um, then I actually started getting to where I actually wanted to die suicidal type thing I think about 17 and a half beginning right, right when I turned 18 I'm 18 now but uh, I reached my peak or really my opposite of a peak. I got as low as I could get about beginning beginning of this year and I tried to kill myself three times within I think a one month period. Um, I tried to take pills. I threw them up. Um, I tried to drown myself. That's almost impossible. It's really hard to do. Of course I didn't succeed. Um, and then the, the third time, I tried to slip my wrist, and luckily, I don't have very stable hands whenever I'm in a crisis, and now, but now, I have two very long, very noticeable scars going down my left wrist, and I know when people see it, they know what I've done, and they judge me of my past, and that's kind of why I'm making the story is to tell the people who do feel suicidal or just do self-harm for the to try to cure their depression it's it's not gonna work it will only lead to you wanting to do worse things it will just build up all this horrible depression you have and it will it's not worth it if you end up you know not you know deciding not to kill yourself or seeking help and you feel better like I do the scars you have will haunt you for the rest of your life and they will follow you everywhere and people will see them and they will make judgments on you and it's horrible I know people see my scars I know they know what I've done and I'm ashamed of it 
And luckily, hopefully, my birthday is coming up this summer. And what I'm asking for for my birthday is a tattoo. I want a tattoo over the scars, which these are the worst ones I have. You can't see them but because of the bright light, but they're there. And I see them, and I want them gone. And the only way I'm going to, the way I'm going to get rid of it is to put a tattoo over it. But that's not, you know, that won't work for everyone. So it's better to just not make the scars. Well, that's pretty much what my video is for, is to share my story and to spread the awareness. And if you are someone who does self-harm and you don't have anyone to turn to and you really just want to stop and you don't you don't have anybody by all means please message me I was like I I'm a busy person and sometimes I don't get my messages right away but as soon as I read them as soon as I find the time I do message back and I am act I'm a very I don't I really try not to judge anyone especially if I really understand the point of they're coming from and by all means if you have no one you feel you have no one to talk to please message me on here and I will give you my cell phone number or my Skype or I mean anything my Facebook you can message me you can text me you know the only thing I really don't do is I don't call like on the phone because I don't pay my phone bill and I don't want to run up my phone bill for the people for my parents who do pay my phone bill and um but on Skype, I will I will video chat you. I will I will message you whenever you're feeling down. You can text me if that's what you feel comfortable doing. It's anything, and I will give you advice on how I stopped because it it took a long time. But the first step is you wanting to stop. You wanting to be happy. You not you know wanting to not have any more scars on your body because they do follow you for the rest of your life and if you do decide to have children one day your children will look at those scars and they'll think huh well you know mommy or daddy does it so that's okay for me to do it too right you, you don't want your children doing that so spread the word of raising awareness for this day I mean I know it's it's already kind of late in the day but there's still time and you know I know there are some people that are watching that they know their friend or their sister or their brother or anyone they know people that do hurt themselves on purpose and I know it's a scary thing but don't ignore it you, you really have to face it if they can't face it face it for them and just don't like call them out but talk to them and say I what you're doing is not going to help and I I know you don't want to do this I know you don't want to be seen like this so maybe you should get some help and you know try to talk them into it don't force them into it because sorry I keep getting choked up <laughs> um, just you know try to help them in the way that you would want to be helped don't call them out or be mean don't call them names don't tell them they're weak because they're not. It's you ever heard that saying of what is it that um something about um some of the it's not the people that are weak. It's just because they've been strong for too long. That really is true. People break, and the people that do self harm, they're broken, and they need some help putting you know themselves back together. So if you're watching this, I hope you're the person that can put yourself or someone else back together. And it's a difficult task, but if you want to do it, you can. But thank you for watching. I really hope this helped somebody and maybe it gave a little inspiration to seek some help because self-harm is a serious, 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 horrible thing and no one deserves to have all these scarves in their body no matter what they've done or what they think of themselves or who they think they are it's 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 never worth it thank you for watching i hope this helped